The following video goes through some of the basics in setting up a simple code table. We'll start by importing a project. Okay, so now if I go to the coordinates folder, you can see that we have one set of coordinates in here called exercise one. Here we can see the codes. And if I view the survey graphically, we see the survey as interpreted by the code table. If I press Alt and V, I can see my current object scale is set to 200. If I set it to 1000, Enforce will resize the text to suit that scale. Obviously that's not suitable for what we're about to do, so I'll set it back. Okay. Here we can see we have a line connecting some points. If I query a feature, Enforce is telling me that the code of that feature is KB, by E curb. And it's also telling me the plan length and the slope length. And down here we can see a single profile along that feature, but obviously because the heights are all the same, it just draws a straight line for us. Pressing the coding button takes us into the code table for that particular code, i.e. KB. Under the point tab we can see that we are drawing a point, style plus, on the layer survey points, in the pen white. We go to the line tab, we can see that's enabled. The line is going to be drawn on the layer roads in the style solid, also in white. There's no symbol, there's no text as such, no shape, but there is height annotation. Again, it's going on the layer default to three decimal places and is aligned parallel to the string. OK that, OK that. So as we can see, we have white lines joining white dots. If we want to make a change, we can query the feature, go to coding, and perhaps I want a dashed line. Maybe I want the height on a different layer. Survey points. I don't want it in light grey, I want it in green. I press OK, and OK, F5, and everything changes. So that's hard coding, i.e. setting the colour of objects to be specific. You can also, however, set objects to get the colour from the layers they occupy. If I query this feature again, go to coding, under point, where it says pen, white, we can say layer pen, i.e. get the colour from the layer survey points. Do the same for line, layer pen, it'll get its colour from roads, and do the same for height, survey points, layer pen. If we now press OK again, and OK again, and F5, again the lines change. You can see the text stayed the same colour, but the lines changed to red. To prove that it is using the layer colour, we go up to settings, come down to layers. Now remember, the feature is on the roads layer. So we select roads, and indeed the pen is red. If we change that to green, press OK, F5, the lines change again. So Enforce is honouring the layer colour, the layer style, as we expect it to. We zoom in. Here we can see a lamppost. I query the point. Code is LP. And if I press coding, we can see again we have a point. This time it's in the greenery layer. That doesn't make an awful lot of sense, so we'll put it back onto the survey points layer. We haven't got a line, we haven't got a symbol. We do have some text. Here we can see LP, and it's writing LP on the screen. Under shape, we can see a one point circle, fill style paving. If I say none to that, press OK, OK, and F5, the fill style disappears. The size of the circle.
is controlled by a parameter. In this situation, the one point circle expects a radius. Under the fields tab, we can provide default values for that radius. We're going to fields. Here we can see that R already set up, and point 0.2 is its value. If I change that to 1, OK. OK again, and F5, the same change of size again. Go back to the code table, set it back to point 0.2. Press OK, OK, and F5, it honors the size again. If I zoom into the other shape here, the manhole, we can see the letters MH and a shaded rectangle on the screen. I query a corner, tells me the code is MH as we expected. If I go to coding, you see the start of the points is set to none. Hence, we don't see any points on the screen. I'm just going to temporarily turn them back on, make them white. OK, OK, five. There we go, we can see one point. Query the point again. No line as we would expect, no symbol. Text, yes, MH. And under shape, it says two point rectangle and hide the second points. I untick hide second points, press OK, OK, and F5. We can now see two points. So, how does the rectangle know how wide it is? If I query a point, go to coding, go to the field tab where defaults are provided, we can see the default value is 1. If I change that value to 2, press OK, OK again, F5, nothing happens. If I query the point again and go to attributes, we can see it's actually got an overriding factor physically attached to the point. If I take that value off, and F5 again, you can see the rectangle does indeed get larger. If I put the attribute back, OK, it obeys the size again. So that's the manhole. I zoom to extents again. This time zoom into the tree. Okay, so the tree's been drawn with a symbol, which represents the canopy, and a shape of some sort sizing the trunk. And we can also query that trunk. We can see the attributes there plotted on the screen automatically. If I change the species from oak to say pine, okay that, and F5, you can see that it updates. How is all that done? If I query the point, I get a coding, see the point as we expect. Again, no line. This time we can see a symbol named canopy. The moment it's a one point scaled symbol, which means it just needs a scale factor to size it. If it goes to the fields tab, we're using S at the moment, so we've got a default size of 10. Look at the shape, which is drawing the trunk. You can see that's a one point circle. Color green, fill style, concrete. I take the fill style off. And the field, you can see with default radius of 0.5. These values will only be used in the situation where the point itself doesn't have its own values to be used instead. You OK that again, press F5. You can see the fill style is gone. But it's also plotting the text for us. If I query the point again, go to coding and text, we can see that we have a text macro set up to extract the information about the point and plot it on screen automatically. It starts, as we can see on screen, with the word type equals. We can then see percent TYP percent. The percentage brackets tell Enforce to go and extract some sort of data. In this situation, it's looking for the flag TYP. If I cancel that and go to attributes, you can see there we have TYP equals pine. Back to coding, back to text. 
After the TYP, we have a slash n, which means new line. And then we have size equals, and it's looking for an S. And again, under S, we can see 4.5. Hence, n force extracts that and puts it on screen. And the process is repeated for the bowl and the height. And as we saw earlier, if I change the species again, and at 5, n force automatically updates.